All right, here the sheep. I get excited. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome already through to game number one in this series. Kimchi, Jigae, enjoy us. I think it's Villager OP. All right, well, it is going to be the, the light colors or the warm colors versus the cool colors coming into this. Which position do you favor, Winston's Waffles? Do you prefer to be on the English French team or do you prefer the, the French Mongol team? Depends on where the Mongols line up against the English or against the French. And it depends on where the gold is for the French, right? I think those are the most important things here. It looks like Victo has a pretty exposed gold, but he's up against the French. So the Frenches are lining up against each other, which means that that rush distance is a little bit further. And you can see the respect there already. Victo already dropping the tower. Oh, wow. Not going to deal with anything, right? This is going to be a very aggressive matchup when you have Mongols in the game. And we already see the man at arms as well from Airstrike. So defending the French gold and attacking the other French gold. That's a lot of the game plan in a 2v2 where you have a double French involved. Um, the Drush isn't going to do a ton against Mongols. So basically this man at arms is his only life goal is to slow down a knight, right? Slow down the first knight production. Yeah, and I think it's so important because in 1v1, you're very happy to to change it up and you can say, okay, well, you're going to hit my gold. That's okay. I'll just make horsemen and everything will be fine. Whereas in 2v2, you, you stop making knights and you're going to have a bad time because that means less damage uh, that you're going to be seeing on the enemy villages, on the enemy economy. And that's probably something that you don't want. Yeah, and you can already see, I mean, Airstrike playing this really well already. He's he's already running the man-at-arms across. He's scouted the gold, so he knows exactly where to go. You can see a lot of respect there from Airstrike as well, putting four vills on gold. Uh, well, not Airstrike, sorry, uh, Lena putting four vills on gold. So already even understanding that his gold could be threatened early. And we do see the double spearman production as well. The man-at-arms trade really well against the spearmen, so you generally try and hit the opponent, but Victo already with the tower defensively. These spearmen might be best at home defending this gold. And did he get enough? That's the question. Yeah, that's going to be a big factor here. Whether he actually got enough... We, uh, Not sure. Yeah, it's, it's hard to know whether uh, whether Lenox picked up enough gold here. Uh, but spearmen are now moving across the map as well. And where are they headed? That's going to be the yeah, question. Yeah, he's got enough gold for the age up, which is good. But still pushed off means that the... Uh, that knight is going to get delayed pretty heavily here until he can free himself from that man at arm. All right. Well, where's the spearman? Not much going to happen here with the tower already in play. So going to slow down the age up for Victo a bit, but probably worth it. An age up coming through now. So school of cavalry, no real surprise there. I think with all of these civilizations, there's a landmark that you'd, that you'd expect. But when it comes to the Mongols, though, what direction do you think they're likely to go here? Do you think is trade landmark going to be the way? We've been seeing a lot of trade in these team games. I think that there's a lot of opportunity for the Silver Tree. Uh, don't know if players are going to go for it. I think it's up to a lot of choice, right? Silver Tree, the, the beautiful thing about the Silver Tree is you can build it and not use it right away. I think a lot of the trap is to immediately train traders, and then you have no army, no income, and you're dead. But it can be a pretty long threat in terms of just having it on the field and being like, at any point, if you give up the map in any degree, I'm just going to start trading, and it can be really, really potent then. So foregoing that feels tough sometimes, at least for me. So I think I prefer going Silver Tree here. It's, I, th um, I think but... it's nice to have the Silver Tree just as a flex, right? Like, even if you don't want to start trading early, you've got the option to do it, right? We kind of see it with the with Mali, and obviously in team games, Mali and trade is a whole different beast. But we do see a lot of Mali and teams moving for, for that sort of, that optional trade. But uh, interesting thing to point out as well, you will see some new UI elements coming in uh, over on the edges of the screen, or at least new to me, because uh, I didn't actually tune in yesterday, but uh, beautiful little uh, elements that we've got there indicating the age up progress for these players. Yeah, it looks really nice for sure. The UI team doing a spectacular job, and Deerstone's coming in for the Mongols, as well as trying to get this tower up. With three spearmen, he should be able to take down the man at arm with some micro, using the charge there nicely, just defending the villager, keeping it simple. Yeah, he's doing a, a good job. It's really annoying. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, we've seen Victor throw down an outpost here to stop this or to allow him to continue gathering. And that's going to force him off this, this position. And the pixel position is absolutely perfect from state. I don't think you, you couldn't go a single tile closer or you'd risk it. And you couldn't go a single tile further away. And he's going to respect it, evacuating away from that outpost. Yeah, this is really tough the tower yeah i don't know where you're gonna even go for gold next 
He's, he's migrating somewhere with all those bills. Does he go to his allies' base? Is, is that going to be the best play? Does he head over to Airstrike's base? And yeah, We've seen that a yeah. lot because it's just where you're going to get actual safety. Um, players don't tend to go to their other gold when your first one's attacked because at this point it's really easy for state to just replicate the first success and just build a new tower <laughs> on your gold. So you have to go where he can't, which right. is far, far away. That first knight is out though. First upgrade coming in, getting that free attack upgrade. It's going to be nice. I already got two knights on the field, I believe. All right, well, the age up comes through for state. We're all in the feudal age now. And how soon until we start seeing those castle edges coming through? Because he's got quite a few villages on gold. I think it's going to be a while before we see any, like, really fast castles. I mean, Mongols can go pretty quick, um, but at this rate, not quite. All right, men at arms about to go down. Losing to its uh, its all-time counter, the knight. Well, the knight and the crossbow probably the the, be the best counters there against the men at arms. But upgrades mm. also coming through. We see wheelbarrow, and now we start uh, we start seeing more outposts coming down from Victor as a French player. How do you feel about all of these outposts getting thrown down here? It, it feels like a lot of resources being used here by Victor. Yeah, this is really really expensive, and it's just to it's basically out of respect for what that one tower can do. That one tower bill, he doesn't want to waste time chasing it he'd rather idle his opponent's economy use the knights offensively um maybe he'll come back now seeing the tower defensively for lena but yeah i'm surprised he's not sending just like that horseman over or something but i guess respecting the three spearmen that were hiding out camped over there by the tower it's going to be hard to spot that vil all right thankfully what... airstrike has that man at arm just kind of guarding the wood line a bit and now the tower's up so should be should feel quite safe to now play aggressive but only four rills on gold five now how many do you squeeze in there? Six? Okay, six is enough. If you're spamming knights, though, it can be really tricky. So this could this could hurt Victor long term if he doesn't find a way to get more bills on gold, which this is a really long transfer time. It, like, hurts your economy really bad <laughs> to walk bills this far. So you don't really want to be in this position if you're Victor. Definitely, Lenok and State are going to feel quite comfortable at this point. There's no aggression on their side that's really doing anything, and they've forced some idle time. This is a nice little pickup, though, idle. taking down that villager. It's going to be a while before another villager comes out there and begins working on those outposts. So, managing to cut the beast off at the neck without even really having to fight against it always feels nice. Yeah, spotting spotting that vill was was really clutch. He, he needed to do that, just get rid of that threat. But meanwhile, his vill's on gold, no tower there, and the two knights coming in, a vill kill. Oh, oh. Beautiful micro Trying right there. The <laughs> that horseman's going to get him. That was, oh. It was absolutely beautiful micro oh. right there. Just... The, the way that he, he managed to pull that villager to the front. He got the movement speed bonus. I think he had the wheelbarrow in as well. Just managed to keep that villager alive. And it's the little things that matter. Because that, that extra bit of gold might be in one unit that he can squeeze out that wins the fight. So, really yeah. nice nice job by Victor of keeping his villagers alive. Yeah, Airstrike and Victor now looking to move out. They've got a couple spearmen, a group of longbows. Gonna try and maybe pressure state here. But I'm not sure what they're really going to find against Mongols. Double stable for French. Pretty standard stuff here. Means maybe a bit of a longer feudal age for both of them. As we see the archer mask growing for state. So pretty even setup here. The big difference is going to be what you can do with the con arrow versus the longbows. That's going to be a lot of the, you know, skill expression in a 2v2 that's this, like, um, mirrored. So how important is it to get this YAM network out here and, and start dealing with... With, or, or increasing the movement speed at a, at a base level because you can see the outposts are coming up. I feel like if this outpost gets up, it's going to be such a, a great advantage for the Mongol player. Yeah, archers are already faster than longposts, so getting that move speed comboed with the potential for the con arrow as well means that you can take really, really good positions. Fighting without it is probably fine, but you really do want it for full... Uh, mobility, and you can see the movement speed arrow coming in now, and he's going to chase down those spearmen, trying to let his knights get a good engagement, but there's still a few too many spears. Walking headfirst to the knights, ooh, that's kind of painful. Yeah, it's, it, uh, oh. it's beautiful micro, though, coming through from state. Loving the use of the, the movement speed arrow at that point in time, but the number's just not looking the best for Airstrike 900 at the moment. He's, he's, oh, he's really just playing with just a, a handful of longbows, which ideally at this point, we're Crossing the 10 minute threshold, you'd expect to see a little bit more than that. It looks like he was playing just a bit, you know, greedier for some. Maybe he got some eco upgrades or something under the radar that we missed. But yeah, he's, he's looking quite, 
looking fine now though. He's got enough to to zone them out. The long was obviously costing a bit more um, than the archers. Does add up on your economy long term, especially if you're trying to get farm set up for like a decent castle time, which we see a lot of English players try to do for those devastating men at arms. That, ooh, network of castles denied. That's really painful. Yeah, but you say that the villager is coming out in. though. Yeah, I think he's got this absolutely. Yeah, he's fine. So. I suspect that uh, we're going to have to see the, the kimchi enjoyers Great on the cold. stay away from that for a while, but oh, more villagers going down. Look at the villagers going down here. That's a lot of lost that bills right painful. there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure how many died here, but it was a pretty big raid on the gold. You know, we looked at the 2v2 and only two knights from Leenok, and we saw two stables already. So, like, what's going on? <laughs> right, he's definitely got knights on the field doing something aggressive. It's going to be painful here. This is a, a nice solid position here for airstrike. Something that's difficult to push into because he's got that extra attack speed coming in. Knight's getting repelled, though, over in the base of Victo, so he's doing a decent job of just making sure that he's, he's okay. But a lack of walls over here is going to be notable. Just simply because as soon as you start getting those walls up, if we saw a wall in front of this gold mine, a wall across to the edge of the, the map, that would save him a lot of trouble. Oh, just barely spot set in time. That could have been painful if he didn't notice that. Does eat a lot of damage on his knight. It might go down. Victo has a really good knight micro, I've noticed, over the games. Like, he's 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 quite good at pulling the hurt knights. Like, really trying to get the most out of chivalry when he does get the tech. I'm assuming he has it at this point, but I don't think his knights were healing. Um, maybe they just were then? Mm. And yeah, the income. No one really looking for the castle just yet. Airstrike starting to stack food, though. Yeah, that's a lot farms, of food. He probably has a couple farms, right? Maybe 16 farmers at this point. He's going to be in a pretty good spot if he looks for it. Yeah. But... You know, the, the one thing that I'm, I'm missing, I can feel it from, from having the caster mode in, in uh, one versus one, is just the, the worker kill count. That, that, to me, is so important, so relevant, especially when you've got a civilization like France. I just want to know, how many, how many vills have we seen go down so far this game? Because... I've counted on Victor's side prop at least two that I, I can think of, but I suspect it's probably much more than that. I think it was like more like four at this point, right? Yeah, yeah. Maybe three. Um, yeah, the the night mask now for Lenok is on this side. He's come back to double, so Victor once again chasing Lenok, and I really love that from Lenok, right? He's had initiative a lot of this game, right? Yeah. Almost every move has been on the side of the kimchi enjoyers, right? They've had really good position, but there's that longbow mass you're talking about. 20 longbows, 30, maybe 25 there, and a big clash about to happen, but I don't know. I don't know if Lenok and State need to take an engagement right now. You don't really want to fight under Network of Castles if you can avoid it, especially if there's no immediate gain, and oh, what a huge raid again! Yeah, speaking Lenoch, of villager getting... kills, look at it. He's just, he's losing more and more villagers over here. Lenok doing a wonderful job, but hold on a minute. We got ourselves a little bit of a battle back here over on the west side. Plenty of, of uh, longbowmen here looking to try and take down the, the knights. Doing a decent job. Screen comes running through for Victor. Spearman numbers are quite small for both of these teams, as you'd expect. Largely archer and knight civilizations. Not really spearman civs. You know, there's no Abbasid here. There's no no Marlians. And, and a counter raid coming in on the north side. Take a look at that. We got Victor moving in. Looking to go mono -y mono with his French yeah, opponent. But Lenoch, but Lenoch saw it out saw it totally and he's got enough knights to defend it enough knights to attack like this is just so painful if you're in victo's position there's nothing more more difficult than this your opponent has more knights in the middle at the main fight in the 2v2 your opponent has more knights raiding you and your opponent has enough knights to defend your raids it's it just feels so bad yeah. it, it's just such a sad feeling when they've just they're just outmassing you on every front and yeah struggling to see the win condition here for airstrike other than maybe trying to sneak a castle in yeah. at this point but it at this point we could probably see state as well looking for it you know Lenok and if they're going to be locked into this night production for quite a while now they've been using a lot of their natural resources to spam these knights i don't think we've seen a lot of farm investment from them so unlikely to see like really crazy castle times or something from them yeah I, I think it's always something to consider though right because the english player they can always sneak up they're not really focusing a huge amount on gold so uh it, they've always they're always going to have plenty of gold in their base lots of farms as well so i i think you know 60 seconds but hold on a minute look at these longbows getting caught out of position where are the knights he's able to hold on though up against that network of castles do you dare and we've got a bit of a 2v1 airstrike 900 calling in the artillery and saying we need we need assistance over here but look at the night raids coming in. Victor doing plenty of damage, fighting up against some knights in the base of Lenok. And at the same time, Airstrike continuing to push back. Huge damage coming in from this English player. This is exactly what they needed right here, Winston. 
That was a good fight. That was decent. The 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 archers from state never really took an engagement. Like they just re they respected the longbow zoning so much that he he just never went in and fought with Lenox. So Lenox did a little damage, but took a lot in return, both economically and on the HP of his knights on the front. And now back at home, he's defending against all of the knights of Victo. So airstrike pulling in a clutch 2v1 there to hold and survive while his teammate is able to get a bit of damage. Oh my gosh, a lot of bills going down now for Lenoch. A little painful, and we do see the King's Palace coming in for Airstrike on top of this. Yeah. So able to hold the 2v1, able to spam it out. Yeah, those, that, that farm setup for English is really what their big investment is. That's a beautiful position there from Airstrike. For him to be able to do that, set up the Castle Age as well. Because now they're going to have a huge advantage after this Castle Age comes through. But Knight Numbers, Victor, got to be careful here. He's outnumbered by Lenoch and has to respect the Korean. Falls back away from that northern position. Needs to find a way back to his English partner. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's all about these night chargers. When they're alone, night chargers are really fun to micro, but really punishing if you mess up the timing or something. And it's like, just gonna back off for the time being. There's a bit of a raid in the back now with uh, Lenok having to chase around a few knights left. And looks like State and Lenok both nearing the castle age timings with their economies. I yep. wonder how Lenox is really going to feel about affording that, though. He doesn't have a lot of, like, infrastructure on his economy, right? Like, he's, he's using berries and hunt and stuff, and when you go castle on that, it's fine. It's just... It, it's hard It's hard to keep affording this massive group of knights, but at least Victo's in the same state, but Victo adding a second TC as well. We see the Stepford out coming in, and Lenox going to be able to chase down these knights eventually, but they might get a Vel Killer too. Yeah. Uh, I, I think the big question for me is how quick does Airstrike look for his his uh, upgrades? And does he potentially look to push the enemy before they get their upgrades? And I think we've got our answer right now. Take a look at this. Veterancy coming through on the Longbowman. At the same time, both of the Kim Chae Enjoyers are aging up. Stepford out, Royal Institute, both coming in. And another huge raid coming in. Look at Victor returning the favor from Lenox. Says, hey, you hit my gold a million times, I can hit yours. Yeah, they really wanted to pounce on Airstrike's army mid. They really, really, really wanted to do that, but Victo just looping back in with the Knights on the north, forcing Lenok to come back again. And they really wanted the 2v1, because Lenok has a lot more Knights right now, and we do see that Royal Institute coming in as well for Lenok, so definitely feeling ahead of Victo at this point, but Victo with the second TC, maybe gonna be able to make enough Knights? I'm not sure. Yeah, the same equal Knight numbers right now, but... Hmm. The Royal Institute is going to be a big decider there in the HP. Ooh, and a nice little trap there. Those little traps matter. Every every two knights you can kill is yeah, yeah, a huge it, swing. It in starts these to add up. Now, I, I, I guess, obviously, you've alluded to it. The, the Royal Institute coming in right now. What is the reaction of Villager OP as soon as they see that age up coming through from Lenoch? Because they've just got to assume it's the worst, right? They know it's probably not the Guild Hall. So what do they do? Are they, are they thinking about crossbowmen? Are they thinking about more spearmen? Uh, is it that Victor needs to start thinking about aging up himself? Well, it's tough. The one thing Airstrike cannot do is lose this mass, right? The way English functions in these big games is they invest a lot of time with their eco into building up this mass of units, this really big mass of longbows. And rebuilding it is painful, difficult, and it takes a long time. So if they get cleaned up, things are rough. The only thing that could, I could really see threatening at this point is a really insane surround. Maybe... Maybe State needs to go for some mangonels or something at this point. But even a couple horsemen to raid from Airstrike, so he's got a really diverse comp. Well, Victo tries to continue the raids, but that's a, a lot of knights. That's a <laughs> that's huge a amount of knights. of knights, wasn't it? They're, interestingly, they have the same amount of knights. It's just that they're obviously on different parts of the field. Victo at the moment, he's, he's just lost about four knights, we see right there. Uh, but he replaces them, and it's 26 versus 27 knights. The key difference here is that you've got veterancy on one side and nothing on the other. Do we have royal bloodlines in for these knights just yet? It's on the way. 30 seconds to go before D-Day. And Lenox looking yeah. to push the agenda over on this east side of the map. And and, and this is when Lenox just going to force a fight. He's, he's going to threaten to dive the entire economy. But oh, airstrikes come around the back. And there's walling bills on the north. What if... No, not enough walling bills. Okay. I mean, maybe Lenox gets trapped here, but it's going to leave this big ball of archers from state on guarded he, f he may see the landmark here if he sees the landmark it could be very very painful but fortunately Lenok heads the other way and now just begins burning down an outpost which never feels like a really an, 
really decent goal achieved here. Sure, you might kill five Vils, but it's not going to be pretty. And he tries to go for the quick while he gets it. Blocks him in. He says, I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. And now the Longbows should be able to clean up the rest of those veteran Royal Knights. And indeed they are. Look at that. Just so much damage coming out. And if you're Leenok, you have to start worrying about the rest of your army in here. It's also maybe trapped. And you can see Victo trying to continue this wall around. These knights going to have to fight their way out. Ooh, and that's not a pretty fight. This is not a pretty Long fight. And more quick walls coming in over on the west. Look at them quick walls coming in. He's trying to block him. Says, you ain't going anywhere, buddy. We're fighting in the base. We're doing a 2v1. Yeah, not going to be able to squeeze out here. But, <laughs> but only like 15 knights remain and Look they're all the hurt. <laughs> He's going to try and completely trap these knights. Not let them get to airstrike space. Not let these high HP knights heal up. Just <laughs> try and fight them. The walls are everywhere right now. This is ludicrous from Villager OP. I tell you what, they made a new fan today. It's got to be. Oh, so, wow. That is just beautiful, Winston. Have you ever seen anything like that? A full trap like this on, only a couple times. And usually that only happens in like 1v1s when you catch someone like behind your base. In a team game like that, that was a lot of wall. That was a lot of wood, a lot of vill time. It was expensive, but certainly worth it. And we did see an attempt at some siege mangonel or some siege field building mangonels. Uh, the advanced uh, siege engineers coming in for state, trying to trying to get something to deal with these longbows. Even though there's less of them than the archer mass, the archers just can't take an engagement when the longbows are defending. All right. Well, Lenok looking once again ahead behind enemy lines. See what he can find behind here. He's going to have to expose himself to another potential trap. Yeah, he, he's, he sees this beautiful opening. He's like, for me, really? An entrance? And he's going to go in, but like, you'd think he'd remember how painful that was. I mean, his, his, his knights, to be fair, did trade kind of okay yeah. in the base. Like, he did kill a lot of Victor's knights in those engagements. There were some spearmen from Airstrike, but Lena kept moving around and taking fights just against the knights. So it wasn't like that horrible, but it was pretty brutal. Um, it was kind of the comeback move that you know, Villager OP kind of needed here. But we'll see. I mean, they're not going to really aggressive gold on the right. I do wonder about that. If they do spot it, maybe that's a way to move back into this game. But State's massive army is huge, and he's got three mangonels now, so I'm really interested to see that fight. These raids are just going to keep running around in circles forever. This is the fight that's going to matter here, because if the longbow mass go down, that means that Leenok can then raid Airstrike as well. We can see the Knights for Victor are, are looming just to, to the north right now of State's position. Not a huge amount of spearmen here, but the Mangonels firing off towards that longbow mass. We didn't actually get to see the money shot, but you can see right there it was uh, it Ooh. was it was quite expensive for Airstrike 900. State calling yeah, okay, the, the cool. Airstrike on him. <laughs> yeah, calling in the Airstrike indeed. The Mangonels laying waste to some of the units there. But see that's a lot of that's a lot of archers yeah i think we we, we probably need springles out at the moment to deal with the uh with the mangonels it's just so tough at this point like springles in a 1v1 make a lot of sense because like the the direction for attack is like a lot more clear but in team games it, you're committing basically to a position at that point and it's it's really tough to like really justify that i mean you have to in this position i think but it, it feels bad to build springles here uh, especially for English, who are going to have to, like, add the workshop. They don't really have the wood float for that, especially when they're getting raided. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah, this is a bit of a bit of a death push coming in from State, and he is starting to drop down outposts as well, but Lenox still running rings around the French base of his enemy. A push coming in on the front. Where, where are the spearmen numbers? So look at look at the archer mass that's coming out right now for State. This is absolutely huge. 64 archers for him. Maganel shot going down, down once again. And the longbow numbers are starting to fall. Here. Yeah, he's just gonna he's just gonna hang out here. There's a big horseman mass now growing for airstrike. He really wants to take a good engagement against him and get us. Jeez, he gets Shot. so close with him, doesn't he? So he dangerous, so dangerous. All right, well we do have a springled out right now for airstrike. One single springled. I don't know where it is. I just know that there it is. I see it right now. It is it is making its way towards the front line. So he's done the right thing. He's he's. Bided, bided his time. He's waited all this amount. But uh, he has lost a significant mass of longbows. He's actually got half the amount of longbows that his enemies got archers. He 
these knights just still running in circles around the base. The, the, the brutal thing about Mongols in this position is that they could just easily add Springholds of their own as soon as they see it. It's just so flexible, this tech. Same with the Bassids, right? When they get this position on you, it's so brutal. And what's even worse about it is Mongols are burning your buildings and getting the resources, basically, to build these weapons, right? So this position is a very snowball-y one, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it's, it's such a powerful technology. In. All right, well, at the moment, state score starting to pull ahead, but by the same token, airstrikes is pretty far ahead as well. So we've got two two score leaders and then two two guys that are kind of just smashing each other's heads over on that that north side but looks like the king's palace going to be going down defense coming in for airstrike still sitting on that one spring it has one more in queue compare that over to the two that have already come out from state and state's push looking very solid here yeah especially because airstrike has had a lot of his spearmen tied up chasing those knights around for so so long no one really looking for imp just yet. Looks like, looks like uh, kimchi enjoyers smell blood in the water and are just gonna engage fully now for this castle all in with the Mongol siege. Yeah. Just try and take it out. The Springolds trading shots. It's a beautiful position. You can see how how tempted Victo is to try and get in here and shut some of this down, picking up reinforcements and looking to try and take out the Springolds. Manganel's a little bit exposed down here, but the outposts are gonna give them good coverage. And he continues just work. working on the houses. Yeah, they just can't bring knights into this anymore. There's too many spearmen, too many crossbows, and too many knights from Leonok himself. Their opportunities here are to try and be aggressive on the map, maybe. Victo dropping a keep there on the gold, pushing Leonok away. But Leonok already ate most of that. Of course, on the, all the food there for Mongols. Bill's running away. All right, behind well, this, the relics and the uh, sacred sites have been grabbed. Not all the relics just yet. Looks like they prioritized the sacred sites. I think that's a pretty pretty smart move, actually, because of the, the way this push is going. If it does manage to be countered down or, or if if it does get stalled out, they're always going to be able to fall back on the sacred sites. Yeah, we'll see. 1,200 gold to lean on. They just sent a lot of resources there. That, either for... Surely that's not for him. I, that's that, no, no way. that's just gotta be. He floated and yeah. he wanted to send. It, it has okay. to be. I feel like French imp yeah. is not what you want to be going for here. Like, if it was yeah, the other way, if, if, if it was like going to the, the Mongol player, then you'd be like, all right, then that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just had extra res. Yeah. You already have elite knights, basically, just missing a bit of damage, right? Um, but we do see here. the consequence of going for the sacred sites instead of the relics is that uh, now Victor moves out and takes away one of those relics. You know, this this defense for airstrike, he gave up a lot of his base, but the, the the annoying thing about pushing into English is their Springholds get network of castles as well, right? So they trade super effectively against your own Springholds. So if they catch you, it just feels so bad. But we'll see there here, potentially a big punch coming in. Gonna be tough to fight this 2v1 for airstrike. But he's done it before. Will he do it again? That's gonna be the question. Spearman numbers looking pretty healthy for him. Longbow's teeing off on the archers, and we see the knights running through for Victor now. Looking to make his way onto the front line. It's a beautiful screen coming in from Leenok. State continuing to fall back towards the sprinkled emplacements on the outposts. But still, those archers just teeing off non stop, uh, non stop rather, towards the front line. And the numbers here looking pretty decent for Villager OP as they continue to surround and force back this position. We talked about that sacred site victory. Well, it looks like Leenok and State might need to be relying on it because this is getting cleaned up completely. But hold on a minute, because Leenok is heading towards the base of Victo once again. Yeah, Leenok recognizing that, you know, keeping his army alive is going to be more valuable here, potentially. I'm not sure about that call. I kind of wonder what would have happened if he had tried to just take the engagement as well. Because it looks like... It looks like State kind of held a bit, right? So it's like... Kind of wondering if Leonok should have stayed, but maybe, maybe he just didn't want to dive the longbows when it's not really a win condition right now to kill those. The win condition would be to stop the knights from training again, and he realizes dive this eco. So much damage to be had here. Yeah, there's still there's still quite a lot of knights out for Leenok. He's got 35 knights at the moment compared to only the 10 knights of Victor. So even though that trade seemed pretty decent back there, Leenok's still pretty far ahead when it comes to the the military numbers. Yeah, and the kimchi enjoyers, by the way, adding a couple traders now. They've got, it says 11 traders on the UI. I haven't seen that. 
for, but oh, I, that's cool, I think isn't that it? means they have 11. Yeah. Uh, I think that means they have 11 traders, which is kind of going to be a nice addition here for them. See how that pans out as a big fight happens on this gold. A lot of ills just went down there. Yeah, but fortunately, Spearman here for airstrike. Wallalo going off over in the on the west side of the map, I think. Yeah, there we go. A couple of knights just chilling out for the moment. They'll go in and clean that up completely. Leenok also getting cleaned up. His knight number's starting to drop. He's lost about 15 knights just in the last minute. Yeah, what's interesting about this is Leenok has been... I think Leenok's just been playing one TC this whole game, right? Or does he have a second one north of his main? Uh... I'm not sure because Wicker has had multiple TCs for a while now, and there we the go. Vil count is dead even. Yeah, so second TC coming through from for Leenok's set. All players yeah, are on at least two TCs. Okay. Yeah, so they can replenish, but no pressure happening on their side of the map. Okay, yeah, so they've been pretty even economically here, right? The big difference is going to be the trade isn't going to go punished for quite some time, unless, I don't know, maybe the door or airstrike could get some of these horse units across the map. We did see a big... Oh, big mango shot! Big mango shot hitting right there. Um, interestingly, we don't see healing circle coming out for the English longbows, though. Would be really, really effective up against these mangonels. Because he could fall back, get his heals up, but uh, yet to see it come out. Yeah, campfire would be interesting. I think a lot of times players just don't think about it much, right? It's not as potent as it was, if you recall, on the release of the game. It was a very good ability. <laughs> uh, but here we see the mangonel shots did a lot of damage. But they do go down. All right, well, sacred sites continue ticking. We're at the five minute mark at the moment. And now men at arms going to be coming out. So I think as this game draws towards the, the 40 minute mark now, I think the question needs to be asked, you know, in the event that these two civilizations get to the late game, which team does it favor? You know, are you going to be preferring to be the Mongol French player or Mongol French team, or are you going to be the English French team once we're, st once we're talking about Imperial? Because there are, are advantages to both, right? Because if you're playing at the Mongols, then you've got access to the 13 range Springholds, which means you've kind of got siege superiority in that regard. But then obviously playing as the English, you've got access to network of citadels, you've got ac access to, you know, the mass trebuchets that we often see, and of course enclosures. Do not forget about enclosures. I think that the biggest deal to the late game is going to be who can secure trade. I think players have started to realize that trade is your late game income for gold. If you don't have that trade going, even with things like enclosures, it's going to be, it's just a little not enough. I mean, for English, it can work, right, if you're just spamming men at arms. But the Mongols and the French need trade, and that's going to come down to Lenox, seeing if he can maybe full wall the map at some point. If we're really talking about, you know, a post imp like, constant game, right? If we're talking about a long, long game here, you're going to have to wall for the Mongols at some point, and you're going to have to wall out the Mongols at some point, because the Mongol raids are really terrifying. But I don't know, we see the stupa coming in. I mean, late game looking more and more likely here, as... Looks like I'm. I was. Imp I'm impressed here by how Victor and Airstrike have held. Yeah, they've they, lost they, a lot honestly, of Vico recently, though. They, they're looking pretty solid, man. Coming into this, it's it's a little bit like you know they're going up against Wallalol champion. Well, not champions, but you know really really talented players who w went to Wallalol, uh, and you know they, they're in they're holding their own. They're doing a wonderful job. They really managed to hold here, um, which is interesting. <laughs> Because it looked really dire a couple times. Uh, wondering about some of Leenok's fights, right? That trap was such a big moment, um, you know, 20 minutes ago or 10 minutes ago, whenever that was. Yeah. You see, though, Airstrike has really solidified his base, though, on top of this as well. He's he's added a lot of keeps around the map, and it hasn't, they haven't really gone down. There's one on the left sacred site, I believe, still. Yeah, this is yeah. decent position. Yeah, he's, like, he's yeah, done a great he's, job. But I, I think, as you mentioned, like the, the big thing now is going to be walling up because we're in the late game. It's about stopping these raids that have been constantly hitting us. So we're going to need to start securing trade. We're going to need to make sure that, that the integrity of our base is maintained. And I think that's probably going to have to be through stone walls. Yeah, stone walls are going to be the, the trick if you really want to secure yourself for the late game. I'm not sure if either player really thinks that they can win it right now. But yeah, 25 traders now on the side of kimchi enjoyers and villager op not really able to invest into the trade yet and we do see the wing guard coming in those cheaper trebuchet is going to be the clutch item there to pick up Let's see oh nice little trap right there lee not going to be losing out plenty of knights look at the spearman just trying to get in let me in let me in they're trying but uh there's not enough room for all of them to get in 
Nice little cleanup, though. Indeed. All right, so we've got Imperial Age coming through now for Airstrike 900. So he's going to be looking for a lot of key upgrades here. Your big upgrades, enclosures, uh, shattering projectiles is going to be another really important one. Uh, I think, is Network of Citadel's Castle Age or an Imperial Age upgrade? Network of Citadel's is a Castle Age tech. Right, okay. So he probably had he's it. already got it, yeah. Yeah, you, you really hope you do. It's a it's a really big increase, right? It, it, it's a very good tech. Um, surprised if he didn't have it all this time and they were doing okay. And what did Lee not just draw on the map? That's a big wall. Are those all palisades? Uh, we can all we can go in and have a look. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's yeah. a big palisade wall. Yeah. Let's... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah, that's less less of a good move than I thought it was. That's a lot of wood um, for something that can just get burned down very quickly. But I guess if you're in state's position, you you often say like, oh hey, please wall for me, right? Oh. You say that a lot as Mongols. Oh boy. Oh boy, indeed. We got a big problem right now in the base of Airstrike 900. He needs he needs su he needs a miracle right now. He needs a savior. He needs a hero. Where is his ally? And he comes in from the north side. It might be a clean up on all five, but at least Victo is going to attend to aisle three and also look to get a clean up. That keep not going to be going up. The longbow is going to continue kiting over towards the keep on the west side. Victo cleaning up his enemy state looking to uh, to try and stay alive. But at the same time, Lenok doing the same thing to airstrike. And now the knights meet in the center. Plenty of men at arms here, but the numbers still pretty, looking pretty decent for Kim Chae and Joyce. But even if they hold this, even if they, they win this position, what's the point? You're underneath the English keeps. So there's no chance that you get out alive. A lot of English farmers idled. They denied that keep for a while. Look at, look at all the farms completely abandoned. That's enclosure gold lost and they're still trying to raid the trade in the north, but still 20 traders alive and they're going to slowly start to solidify their trade. And you can see that big wall off, if it does eventually complete, will give kimchi enjoyers a lot of safety moving forward. Yeah, yeah, this is a, this is an increasingly difficult position for villager OP. But the numbers are still here for Victor. 33 knights at the moment compared to the 15 of Lee Nock. So if he can look to go Imperial Age, maybe get some elite upgrades. He's already got the... Uh, the royal bloodlines through, so the main thing he's going to be looking for are those elite upgrades. Yeah, they're down 60 economy units, but they're up 20 military, so that fight, that dive, definitely didn't go great for them in the long term, right? It's okay for them in the short term here. Yeah, now I, I think another thing to note is that the traders, if, even though they're, they're one economic unit, they're really not. They're actually much more than one economic unit. Uh, it's probably best to think about each trader on a 2v2 map, probably closer to two villages, maybe even bordering on two and a half villages. What would you say? Yeah, probably closer to two, right? They're they're really, really strong, especially if you're Mongols. You get all these bonuses for them, the movement speed and the, um, the increased resources, right? The more you have, the more you get kind of thing up to nine. And well, <laughs> dueling keeps going down there. That's kind of funny. I uh, wonder who's <laughs> going to win this. Definitely Victo. <laughs> Leonok being a bit bold there. And it looks like we do have an HF going to be coming through here. Keep does get cancelled in the middle. And look at the night numbers coming out for Victo. Leenok going up with a red palace to, to the Imperial Age. But I feel like right now, Leenok, you got bigger fish to fry. It's Victo. Yeah, this is kind of... It's a bold choice. I mean, the Red Palace all the way over there kind of makes sense. It's going to help protect the trade on that side. Really shut down a lot of the raids that are diving right through state's main economy as well. So I kind of like the positioning here, especially if they can stone. Uh, I was going to say, to, to be fair, I don't even think they really need the uh, the College of Artillery, right? Because they've got the Springlords from state, which are arguably the best Springlords in the game. Uh, not even arguably, objectively the best Springlords in the game. Um, so... I, I feel like th this is actually pretty fine. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point right now, Lunok and State are just thinking about the long game, right? And that doesn't really help the long game as much as, you know, holding certain elements of the map, right? Like holding down certain spots, like securing trade is more is, is better than, you know, one range on a, a Culverin versus a, a Springle, as you say, right? Like it's just more important to have all the resources to do what you need to do. And, big raid coming in this is that's a lot of nights uh, this is a lot of nights yeah <laughs> you know as, as we were talking about this this is a this is quite a few nights from victor <laughs> he's up to 44 nights now and he's going to start working on the trade line and that's exactly where he's going look at this so he's going to hit camp on the trade post there's no alternative trading post this is the only one that you've got 
So by camping this, it shuts down trade completely. And those 37 traders right now that the Kim Chain Joys have got completely vanish. They're gone completely. Well, not yet. Yeah, but the Mangadai. The Mangadai is the switch I was really waiting for. Mongol Mangadai, they're so good against knights, especially once they get up to elite. And state is an Imperial Age as well. So these techs are going to come in for all that damage. And just look at how much damage they do. It's so strong. And you know what's even worse is once they sneak by you, there's not a lot of stone walls on the map to hold back the Mongol Flood. If these Mangadais oh. ever get across the map, it's going to be so painful to deal with because not a ton of keeps in the base of Victo at the moment. From what I remember, I think he could have added one actually. So maybe he'd be okay. But if these Mangadai find a soft spot, it... It's going to be brutal. All right, well, we've got trade now coming through from the other side. They're up to 20 traders already. Down on that south side, Victor and Airstrike are working uh, together to get that trade up and running as quickly as they can. But a nice little raid coming in from Victor, looking to take out some villages of Lenok. And now that village account going to begin to fall down and move closer towards that same central location. And there we go, seeing 208 versus 207 now. 25 traders versus 34. Things getting uh, really heating up in this game. This is, this is amazing to think. This is our, the first game that we've got of the day of this series. What an incredible game. Yeah, I think we're, we're going to have to bunker down here for a long one. The number <laughs> of keeps on the map is just really skyrocketing. The red palaces are out. There's just keeps everywhere. Look at the red palace. Just chunk that keep. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at it. It's just it's killing it so fast. It doesn't mess He's around the red palace. Oh, uh, yeah. Red yeah. palace. We'll mess around. Yeah, look at the damage. Just It's insane how much damage that thing puts out. Yeah, that keeps dead. Yeah. That's a good red palace. Though. That's a lot of value. <laughs> it's it's actually a really solid point that, he, that he's got there. The position is, is perfect, right in front of the uh, the sacred side. So there's a potential that we might see the, the inverse happening, where there's a sacred victory coming out for the villager OP team. But have a look at what we've got. We've got problems in paradise. Trouble in paradise as Mag and I make their way across the map. The lack of walls here at 42 minutes is all of a sudden becoming very mu very much a relevant factor yeah and you, you think like if, if victo finishes that wall that he made for the trap a long long time ago i th i think it might actually be good for them ming and i are really good at just running through your base but if you have a wall cutting them off it really it really shuts down a lot of the directions they can take but it's just so annoying oh yeah this is tilting to watch because i've dealt with this so many games now <laughs> it's so good if if there is Oh, he got, and he got... How did he get through? How did he get through? Did someone leave the gate open? What they happened right the there? They the forest. It's painful, but uh, yeah, these... They're just finding so much value on all those English farmers. Honestly... The count dropping. Look, you can yeah. just see it on the top bar. Th this is what turns again. the game. Th this is this single factor right here, the Mangadai factor, could sway the game. If, if this doesn't get cleaned up immediately, if there's not walls that are, uh, that are, are put down to respond to this straight away... There's going to be real big problems. Look at this. Mangadai just yeah. feasting, having villagers for dinner tonight. Yeah, and, and what's really punishing about this is just like 10 Mangadai require you to bring back so many units because you need to cut off all the potential angles they could go to next. So like 10 Mangadai can take like 30 units to hunt down because you need to, or you're just chasing them forever, right? So you need to like trap them in a spot in. Ooh, this is brutal to watch, and that's a lot of ills going down. I mean, Look at the vill count right now. They, they, they've just lost 75 villagers in the last two minutes. This is all Mangadai. Yeah. This is all 100% Mangadai. And he's still going. He's still going. Victor it, hasn't realized or doesn't care. I would say he hasn't realized. You should care about this many bills. I mean, at this point with French, you can kind of justify ignoring a raid for a bit, but he notices now and... We'll see how this fight goes as more Mangadai run in and the trebuchet is just sitting idle because all the army that's supposed to protect the push is running around your base as the knights run in as well. And this is going to be really devastating long term for kimchi enjoyers. Well, I, I just hope that villager OP, oh, <laughs> the trebuchet is, uh, it, you know, it, it's rare that we see trebuchet versus Mangadai, but today we have been able to witness it. Uh, but I, I just hope that villager OP can walk away from this game with a lesson learned. We need to wall against Mongols. We should probably look to do that before 40 minutes. The moment you see, like, a Mangadai, I think it's worth... Like, especially late game. Like, if you're seeing a switch into Mangadai late game, I think it's worth, like, kind of wrecking your economy short term by just buying the stone and just 
just buy the stone and and while now you you'll have economy in 10 minutes versus the alternative is you no longer have economy yeah a lot of times um so yeah we'll see how this goes all right well it looks like a bit of a dive and happening underneath the keeps still plenty of knights alive uh for Lenok. he's giving him a bit of a run around at the moment but uh village is going to be the main focus here we can see both both teams have dropped a little bit on the village account but the main factor here is going to be those traders as Vodka is pointing out, 58 traders against 17. Uh, and right now they still have a larger army, but a lot of that is invested in kind of lower pop efficient units, right? We have a lot of spearmen and a lot of longbows still for airstrike on the map, and it might make their army look really large, but if you consider the army value and head, I think this is really tough to look at, right? It's a really tough position. All right, do we see any stone walls on the side of uh, Lenok? It's still just the Palisades, right? Yeah. Oh, another cleanup in the middle of the map. The Magadai numbers oh. really starting to increase at this point. So uh, I'm trying to find the silver lining here. What what if, uh, you know, what if uh, State has just cleaned up a whole lot of population space here for the traders that Victo is going to make? You know, because it's late game. Victo wants to make traders. There you go, eh? I guess you could look at it <laughs> that way <laughs> on the bright side, but generally at this stage when you're down two to one economy, just making traders is going to be tough. You, at this point, like what becomes annoying when you're losing this many bills, that's... Oh, this is going to be painful. Oh. That's a lot of mega die. Oh, but, right into the knights though. Yeah, that's a good little catch. He's managed to find and the longbows here as well. Also going to be able to pick up any stragglers. Still gets a, a fair amount of mega die through. Keep in mind they are pretty expensive. Uh, but obviously, at the end of the day, you just prefer them not to be getting through because when they... Well, let's let's watch what happens as they get onto the farms down here. It's uh, it's going to be an absolute massacre. But not for me. Look at the knights now. Just cleaning them up. Yeah, but still, look how many units are being pulled to the back of the base. So much space being made for these bombards with the protection of the springholds to come in and just start cleaning this out. The trebuchet is slowly taking down the red palace. The repairs have ended. He's out of wood, man. He's out of wood. All these raids have added up now. And, the and this is when you're going to start feeling that impact, right? Yeah. It's just going to feel bad. The, yeah, you're 100% right. Because now, now that your village account has dropped so low, the units that you've got are pretty much it. Because you need to try and work on getting that villager count back up. But the bombard numbers for State are starting to rise. He's got four bombards in the back. Mangadai in the yeah. front. And he's in a solid position here. Yeah, and Victor surrenders. There's the good game. Oh. It's been called. GG indeed, what a game one for today. I, you know, after yesterday, I was like, all right, I mean, a bunch of 2-0s pretty quick. Like, we'll see what the meta looks like today. And immediately we're hit with a very long imp game, right? Like this, this was pretty standard stuff until kind of that mid game. I mean, Victo, Victo and Airstrike holding in that castle push from the Mongols, right? State had that yeah. position. Remember with all the trebuchets and just a couple of those network of castle springholds were able to really hold, push them back and a couple of really good fights from Victor's side. I'd love to see the military count um, because I think if we yeah, can... there we go. Oh, right. Yeah, this is this is interesting, right? It's 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 kind of crazy. Count. The uh, yeah, how you've got the, the French players down the bottom and then you've got the archer players at the top. But uh, 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 to me, it all just comes down to that that single set of Mangadai getting through. We just saw what was it, ten Mangadai getting through, and the consequence of that was seventy five dead villagers, and it was just not a recoverable situation.